Well, today I'm going to start a new project. It's going to be the complete and extensive restoration of these Mulbacher from Paris lamps. Now, I haven't been able to find the exact starting and ending dates for Mulbacher, but I do know that Mulbacher exhibited in the 1876 International Expedition in Paris. Now, Mulbacher did also evolve into a custom auto body builder and made bodies for the likes of Rolls-Royce clear into the early 1900s. Now, these are high quality lamps. They weigh about six or seven pounds a piece. They were built for a larger, possibly coachman driven carriage. The bodies are six inches in diameter, which is measured through just the body itself and the lamps are 24 inches tall from the bottom to the top including this fancy finial at the top. They have bent bevel glass in both the sides and the front. The side glass is bent in one direction, the front glass is convex. They have typical European mounts which is oval in this part where the lamp fits down into the socket of the carriage. That oval keeps the lamp from turning about and therefore it doesn't have to be crammed down tight in there. Also present on these lamps is a foot loop right here where a leather strap could be put through and go down around the arm of the mounting bracket and secure the lamps onto the carriage. I'm going to take these lamps apart, uh, make the necessary repairs, we'll try to put them back right, and I'll try to make them as historically correct as possible. Back in the 1800s, only one color of bright metal would have been used on the lamps, and certainly not copper. Copper was just not considered appropriate to be left polished on the outside of a lamp. Now, where one color was used, that would have gone through the entire turnout, from the horse harness, to the carriage itself, to the accoutrements such as lamps. And it would certainly have been more sparingly used than is popular today. Some other things that I'll be looking at on these lamps are the heads where they've been taken apart and some of the seams and so forth have not been lined back up correctly. We'll straighten that out. The glass will have to be removed and some of the scratches in the glass will be polished out. So let's get started. The first step in restoring these lamps will be to take them all apart. Thank you. 
Each of these two bent side glasses have bezels made in four separate pieces. And the bezels are also made out of steel rather than copper or brass, which would be more usual. Seeing as they are made out of steel, when I finish paint these lamps, I'll go ahead and paint these bezels black to match the rest of the lamp. The side glasses are slightly different from each other. So I'll go ahead and mark each one to make sure that each one goes back in its original position. You can see that the pin for this hinge has been broken. I'll go ahead and rebuild this entire hinge. I'll have the scratches and little rock chips all polished out of this glass before I put it back together. I'll plan out the chuck that I have to turn in order to make these new flanges to fit these lamps. I have made some cardboard templates in order to help me make these new pieces to fit exactly into the old parts. This chuck is one that I have used in the past to make a pair of flanges just a little bit larger than these. I'll be able to cut it down and make it work for this set.
I'll use my template to make sure that I have the shape of this chuck just right. This is 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter copper clad steel welding rod. I'll use it as a core for that rolled outer edge on these flanges.
I use a bit of solder to tack these rods in place so that I can spin the brass over them.
Once I get the edges rolled, I'll cut the bottoms out of these shells and send them off to my polisher to get them prettied up. Sixty degrees at dinner time last night to our first taste of winter. Twenty-four degrees and three inches of snow. Well, that's a pretty rough ending to our beautiful autumn here in South Central Montana. I guess that starts about six months of shoveling snow and sweeping off the sidewalks. And that's pretty much all the time I have for this video. In the next video, I have two more spinnings to make for these Mohlbacher lamps. Thanks for following along. We'll see you then.